Hey, this is Hillary. Uh, holy shit! <laughs> I'm back with this game again. Um, so I started this, I started the path as my very first Let's Play, now more than two years ago. And I've recorded the, my last episode playing as the girl in white. Um, around the same time I recorded all the other, other episodes. And I didn't post it because... <laughs> when I went in to play again, so in between me recording the last episode with Scarlet and recording this one, I updated Windows 10 because I do this on my Windows laptop, I had Windows 10, and when I loaded it again, it was totally janky and you'll see that when you see more of the footage that I recorded. Like it moves super slow, uh, the player character moves in this, in this very like, um, very awkward movements with limited animation and that's just how it is now and I saw an update by Tale of Tales and they said that the Windows 10 update basically ruined the path <laughs> because the way it you know I don't know have the technical knowledge but the way it updated completely changed how the game plays and so my recording session with the girl in white just wasn't what I wanted it to be. And it made me so thankful that I recorded it, but at the same time, it's just not very good. And so for a long time, I didn't post it. And you know, also some other stuff happened that is a reason why, you know, I wasn't making videos, I moved, I started a new job, all this other stuff I didn't have time to record anymore, or I didn't have time to record as much and post as much. But I really wanted to finish it because this game means a lot to me and I was planning to say a lot about why this game means a lot to me. So I'm going to be... Oh, and another thing, another reason why this recording was messed up. My commentary over it was really, really quiet. Like, And as you all know, the handful of you who bother to watch my videos know I'm naturally very soft-spoken and I really have to adjust game audio a lot to be able to be heard above it very frequently and sometimes the results are not good but my recording over it was even quieter than usual so I'm going to be narrating over a lot of this <laughs> to try to make it salvageable and towards the end there'll be some stuff where it was, it was loud enough that I can be heard and you'll just hear the original recording but I'm going to go into it and talk a bit about this game and why it's important to me and why I made it my first Let's Play and also just about playing the game itself. But yeah, I need to give that preface and I'm going to try to edit this in a way that it's watchable. <laughs> uh, but I hope you enjoy and I am very happy to finally, finally be finishing my first Let's Play. So if you've um, played with, played as all of the sisters, and they've all seen their wolf, and everything, and you get you, uh, the girl in white will appear in the same room as where the sisters normally are. And you can select her and play as her as you would with any of the other sisters, and you go off to the path basically like you would with any of them. The, I did have when I was um, kind of testing things out when it was obvious that it wasn't playing as it had been before uh, and I wasn't recording. I had a really interesting experience with the girl in white. I had, you know, selected her and we were out at the beginning of the path and you know how when you stop interacting, you stop pressing buttons, the character will kind of do what they want. The girl in white went to the phone box and called home on her own and went back to the to the main menu area where you pick out one of the sisters or the girl in white. It was completely bizarre and I had never seen, I don't think at that point I had ever seen one of the sisters or any player character in the path do that. It was as if she knew that everything was janky and she was like, no, let's, let's not go out on the path. Let's just forget about it. It was so strange and I wish I'd been recording and you're just going to have to take my word for it because I don't have any evidence that this happened, but... Yeah, here we are, and you get the same messages, like, don't go into the forest, stay on the path, yada yada yada. And, um, you can do 
most of the same stuff except um, you kind of can't get lost the way the sisters do. You have full run of the forest and you can go to all of the locations that they do, but you won't get lost because you're the girl in white, so you don't need the girl in white to come and guide you back to the path. You know your way around. Um, yeah, you can see how, how slow and how awkward her movements are now. This experience, I mean, I already knew that um, video games and software are kind of ephemeral because, you know, they only, they work optimally for the settings and for the operating system they were made for, right? And so you have emulators and stuff, but if you don't have something to imitate, to emulate, the environment that the software was originally designed for, it's hard to get a piece of software to run like it used to. And uh, these are really ephemeral pieces of uh, media. We often don't think about it. So anyway, here's- oh, we're going to the playground here. Yeah, so I- even though it was extremely slow and extremely janky, I tried to show as many parts of the forest as I could um, to you guys. And here's the playground, but it takes an age and a half to get there. And you can see when the, um, when you've run a certain amount of meters or how much when the, the map comes up for the girl in white, it has the locations spelled out, unlike with the red girls. So she can't put things in her basket. Okay. That's really interesting. That makes me more inclined to explore some more, actually. So I recorded uh, this thing, this whole thing talking about why this game is important to me, and then I listened back to some of the footage I originally recorded for this, and I basically said the same thing except better. So towards the end of this video, you hear about why this game is so Im important to me. Um, but I do want to mention one thing that I realized, and it's that we're coming up on the 10th anniversary of this game. As I'm recording right now, it's late 2018, and um, the Path came out in March of 2009, so we're coming up on the 10th anniversary of it, which is pretty freaking exciting. And um, yeah, I'm just you know, grateful to the people that made it, and those of you who have um, watched this, and I'm just going to go into the, the spiel I recorded <laughs> years ago, because it's way better than anything I have to say right now, and the rest of this video will be stuff that I originally recorded when I played this. Bye! So as we're coming toward the end, I do want to mention a little bit about why I chose this game as my very first to Let's Play. It is a game that's very important to me. Um, when it from the time it first came out, when I became aware of it, I don't remember exactly how I became aware of it, but I was just obsessed with it. I thought um, it was very creepy and fascinating. Um, and I kept watching the, this trailer they put out to promote it that um, um, I think the, the music and the sounds and the like harkening back towards fairy tales and um, it was probably one of the first indie games I really got into at that time. I hadn't been playing games for a while because I'd been moving around a lot and I was in college and I had a lot of other stuff going on. I was really really busy um, and, and yeah I just I loved it. Um, I think I downloaded it on my 
one of the computers at my student newspaper office <laughs> where I did like writing and editing because um, for some reason the specs on my laptop it, it didn't run very well so I couldn't use it and I was very frustrated but I really really wanted to play it um, and it was probably the first game where maybe we think about like the line between art and what we traditionally think of as uh, video games or computer games and how the um, the tools and the medium of digital interactive settings can be used for a lot of different purposes, not what we traditionally think of as games, um, but things that, that blur the boundary. So it's also kind of evocative of um, a game I played when I was younger called Secret Paths in the Forest by um, Purple Moon, um, in that it's like mysterious and involves a forest, but otherwise it's not that similar, but I think um, and maybe because they both have path in the name. Um, but for those reasons, it resonated with me very, very deeply, and that's why I chose it to be the first game I would Let's Play. And I've been thinking, because I've been wanting to dip my toe into Let's Playing for a very long time, um, but just didn't have the time or the inclination. And I knew when I was thinking about stuff I would Let's Play, this, this game was always at the forefront of my mind. It's unlike the Red Girls, she walks through the gate proudly. Well, of course she hasn't encountered a scary wolf, so... But it's an interesting contrast because we're used to seeing the Red Girls being sad and hiding their faces and being slumped down as they walk through those gates in the rain. I really hope it didn't, doesn't crash inside Grandma's house. I'm going to be really, really frustrated if that happens. Okay. Wow. See, now this runs fine. Which just annoys me all the more. There's a picture of the girl in white above Grandma's bed. There we go, here comes the girl in white. Super slow and robotic. See Grandma open her eyes. It's just so subtle. Oh my god, that, that took forever. I'm gonna have to find some way to edit it to make it not extremely long. I don't know what to do. <sighs> Items collected two out of six. Distance traveled 690 meters. I guess whether or not we encountered the wolf is irrelevant. This is referred to as the epilogue. Okay, and the girl in white has. Oh, oh. Oh. 
stuck in the door? Okay, there we Ginger, so basically, if you remember some of the, in some of the versions of the tale of Little, Little Red Riding Hood, there's um, a hunter woodsman who cuts Little Red Riding Hood out of the belly of the wolf, and in this telling, the girl in white is the woodsman, and that's why she has blood on her uh, little white dress. It's because she cut the six sisters out of the belly of the wolf, or the wolves, or what have you. So, um, and that's the path. And we're back to where we started. And you can, you know, play it again, or what have you. Okay, that's gotta be a glitch. I can't even see my cursor. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be there. Okay. Um, so I have the rest of the Tale of Tales catalog of games, so I want to play those. I'm probably not going to start playing them immediately just because I don't want to have my channel be completely Tale of Tales games, but I do want to play the others or as many as I can and, and record and, and everything. Um, this ended so freaking weird. It's like she's dead and she's been like hung in the middle. That's so freaking weird. Um, <laughs> so thank you if you've managed to watch this. I know not a ton of people watch these things, but I don't really care. I'm having fun making them. I'm just really glad to get this LP done. Even if it got finished in the weirdest possible janky way, and now I'm going to have to edit it to be something remotely acceptable. But regardless, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time on the newly rebranded Offbeat LP. Bye!